Hi, in today's case, we're going to talk about a patient who suffered a torn meniscus. Today, I'm bringing you a very interesting case. This was a male martial arts athlete that tore his outer meniscus during a training session. So it was very important for him to do a full recovery because he was still competing and also teaching martial arts classes. So he needed his knee in working order. He came to my clinic. He had already gone to the orthopedic surgeon who advised him to do the meniscus surgery, but he didn't want to do it. He had already done it on his other leg. He wasn't really satisfied with the results. So he wanted to look for an alternative way. And that's why he came to me to try and treat it with acupuncture. If you'd like to learn more about the kind of techniques that I talk about in my videos, don't forget to check out the links in the description. I have courses available both in Portuguese and in English that you can check out below. First of all, I always find it very hard to go against doctor's recommendations. So I told this to the patient that he should be careful if he really was going to go against his physician's orders or against his physician's recommendation of doing the surgery. I told him that acupuncture has a lot of success in treating knee injuries, but still it's hard for me to go against the physician's orders. But since the patient decided that he wanted to go ahead with the treatment and at least postpone the surgery, I accepted to treat the patient. Meniscus tears are very common, particularly in athletes. It's a very, very common injury, and most of them end up being corrected by surgery. The meniscus is a crescent-shaped structure. It is cartilaginous, and it's inside the joint, dividing it into areas. Meniscus tears can be healed without surgery, either with acupuncture, physiotherapy, or a combination of all of them, but generally there are injuries that are very hard to heal because there's not enough blood flow to the meniscus for the injury to heal itself. And that is why most doctors recommend surgery. This case was a partial tear, which is good. So it was possible that it could heal without the surgery. But unfortunately, it was in what is called the white area of the meniscus, which is the area with less blood flow, making it even harder for this type of injury to heal without surgery, which is, I think, why the doctor recommended for the patient to do the surgery. So let's analyze the case. This was a 32-year-old male patient, and as I told you, he had a partial tear in his outer meniscus on his right knee. He came to the clinic shortly after he had his injury, so there was, the, there was still a bit of swelling around the knee and he had a lot of pain in most movements. The pain was mainly around the outer side of the knee and he felt it when bending the knee or if he had to stand on one leg and use the knee for balance, it was very hard for him. As you can imagine, this is a big problem for someone who does martial arts and who teaches martial arts classes. So for this kind of treatment, my main goal in the beginning is to promote blood flow to the knee because we want to promote healing. As I told you, the patient didn't want to do the surgery, so he was trying to do the full recovery only with acupuncture. The only other thing he was doing was taking glucosamine, which is a great supplement for joints. The first thing I did for this patient was to do local bloodletting around the knee. And why did I do this? First, I told you before, there is very little blood flow to the knee. So I want to increase blood flow. Plus, when you have a traumatic injury, generally you get stagnation in the area. So you don't have enough chi, you don't have enough blood flowing inside the knee. So what I want to do is open the whole area. For this, there is a very interesting technique where I do 
very superficial bloodletting around all the joint. This will help remove the stagnation and improve the blood flow. So what I do is going around the injured area, in this case the right knee, and prick blood from all around the joint. You can do this by several techniques. My favorite way is to use a pen with a lancet. The pen I'm using is from the brand Dongbang and it uses the same lancets that people use to do the diabetes test. I love this pen because you can do a lot of pricks in a very quick movement because you can do this by hand but the problem is if you're going to do 10, 12, 15 spots of pricking around the knee or around any kind of joint when you do the second one, the first one is already starting to bleed, so you'll get blood all over your gloves. It will be a lot harder to do, and with this, it's a lot faster. I have the pen here. As you can see here, it looks like a regular pen. I like this one because the tip is metallic, so I can sterilize it without any kind of problems. You remove this part here, and you insert one of those lancets that I told you about. It fits inside here, and then when you press the button, it comes out just a little bit. And the advantage of this against the regular diabetes pens is that for those generally, you have to do one click and then arm the pen again. In this one, the spring is always ready, so you can do several pricks in a row. And my procedure generally is, in this case, we're talking about an E, clean it with a lot of alcohol because as we know, it's a vasodilator, so it will help, help the bleeding. And then, if you can imagine that this is the knee, I will take my pen and just go all around it. Maybe 10, 15, 20 times, it depends on the size of the area that I want to work, and then just let the blood come out for a little bit. This will not be a lot of blood, but you will see some blood coming out and that's all you need to open the area. After doing this, I go towards the acupuncture needles and I start my acupuncture treatment. We could just think in the lines of the usual balance method, which channels are affected, which channels can treat, but for both ligament and meniscus injuries in the knees, there is one thing that I like to add, which is going to the opposite side elbow, I like to do one threading needle which starts in the area of large intestine 11 and goes all the way through the joint into heart 3. So I will do something like this with a long needle, generally a 50 or 60 millimeter needle and go all the way through the joint. This is not very pleasant for the patient but it's not so painful and it's very good to get good results. After this technique, I decided to add just a few more points to help the treatment. And the points that I used were first on the side of the injury. So this was on the right side. I went to the foot and I used the guiding needles for the channels in the area where the patient complained more about pain. In this case, it was stomach and gallbladder channel. So I added gallbladder. 41 and stomach 43. I added also on the opposite side ashy points in the area of liver 8. This is a very good point in this situation. First of all, because it is an image of the other side, and as we know, the liver will balance the gallbladder, but also because we know that the liver is responsible for the good flow of chi and by consequence for the good flow of blood and it's also a good meridian to treat sinews and ligaments and these were the points that I used for the treatment. During this treatment we saw very quick improvement. As I told you the patient was an athlete and he needed his knee to recover as quickly as possible because he wanted to compete and he also wanted to be able to teach classes and demonstrate the exercises. I asked him to refrain from doing any kind of hard exercise on that leg, especially in the beginning of the, of the treatment, so the patient was not training in the beginning. We started treating three times a week, and from the first to the second treatment, 
we saw almost all the swelling go down and the pain was a lot better in the small movements that he tried to do. I kept the same kind of treatment except that I didn't do the bloodletting around the knee because I don't like to do bloodletting in the same area in consecutive treatments because I want the skin to have enough time to heal. So for the second and third treatment of that week, I did exactly the same as the first one except for the bloodletting. On the second week when the patient came for his fourth treatment, there was no more swelling of any kind. The movement which was much looser, but he still had some pain. So I kept the same idea of the treatment with the threading needle from large intestine 11 to heart 3 and the guiding needles and the needle around liver 8. After the second week, we started spreading the treatments more because we were seeing a very steady improvement from the patient and we went to one treatment a week. After four weeks, the patient was already saying that he felt almost no symptoms and the movement was very close to 100%, so he started training lightly. We continued doing the same treatment using the point from the elbow, guiding needle, and ashi point from the other knee, and after seven weeks, the patient was feeling 100%. He had already returned to full-time training as usual and he was feeling no pain and no discomfort on the knee. The patient unfortunately did not do any more imaging on the knee so I don't know if the injury was 100% solved but the fact is that he was able to train without any complaints and have full range of motion on his knee. This is a very interesting case to me because we can see how effective acupuncture can be and with it we can sometimes avoid more invasive treatments such as a surgery and the patient can have a very full recovery. In my opinion acupuncture is a great resource for athletes and that's the reason why we see more and more professional athletes going towards acupuncture in order to try and prevent and treat their injuries and also to avoid more complicated and more invasive treatments. If you like this video, don't forget to like and subscribe. It's very important for the growth of the channel. Also, share it with your contacts so they can see how acupuncture can help them in their lives too.